somebody please tell me when they're doing that on this show. Now, well, you may have seen in the newspapers and on the news, this is one ghost story that has truly gripped the nation. Just over the border in Staffordshire, a ghoulish black-eyed child has been terrifying the residents of Cannock Chase. Well, very spooky indeed. So, uh, that got us thinking, do we have a famous resident ghost in Coventry and Warwickshire? We got in touch with our afternoon show ghost correspondent, Steve Ball, and he joins us on the show now. Hello, Steve. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm all right. This has, this has gripped the nation, this story, hasn't it? It certainly has. It certainly has. And that's got to be good for you, hasn't it, in your line of work? Um, it, it, yeah, not really, no. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it, it's out of, it's out of our, uh, our area. I mean, we, we mostly concentrate on the Coventry and Warwickshire area. Um, and there are quite a few groups that do tend to go through that. But we tend to go for more the, the ghost side of things more than the spectres. Oh, I get you. Or that sort of thing. Um, and I this mean, has got it, the nation talking, though, hasn't it, all well, of this? the black-eyed children, I mean, it's, it's, a, it really is a phenomena. It really is. And, I mean, the, the earliest that we can actually date it back to is the 1980s. There, there doesn't seem to be anything on this before the 1980s. But it's very large in America as well. There are lots and lots of reports of black-eyed children in America. <laughs> um, and they seem to have started around the same time that they were actually seen on Cannock Chase back in the 1980s. They do. So, but nobody seems to know where they are, where they come from. Nobody seems to know who they are. Um, the, 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 the earliest case that I could see was a guy called Brian Bethel in America. Yeah. And he was sitting in his car outside a movie theatre. Oh. Hang on, can I just stop you for a second, yeah, please? Can. Right, Kerry, can you come and switch my lights on, please? Can, my head, can you switch the lights on in the studio? Right, thank you. Carry on. Sorry, Steve. I've, <laughs> I've officially got the hairs in the back of my neck upon end here. Right, this, this guy was sitting actually in his car, and he was writing a check out to <laughs> his phone provider and all of a sudden there was a, a tap at the window and there was two young children stood by the side of his car and they asked if they could have a lift because they'd been to see the movie but they didn't have enough money to get home. Yeah. So he was a bit, bit dubious about taking two young children in his, into his car and um, all of a sudden one of them sort of banged on the window and said, you know, you must take us. And when he looked at them, they had no... Uh, colour to their eyes whatsoever. Their eyes were completely black. Uh, at which point he panicked and drove off. Uh, but there's there's countless reports of people of, of the children knocking on people's doors and asking to use telephones. Um, and then when people have let them in, they've sort of been overcome with a fear of dread and uh, almost like they're in the presence of evil. But there is actually a medical condition where people do tend to lose the pigment in the eye. Um, but the, the difference between this and that is the fact that the black-eyed children are reported as having no white in their eye whatsoever. Yeah, that's the difference, isn't it? That's it goes beyond medical condition. Yeah, that's, that's the difference to the medical condition. But it, it's one of those stories. It's, you know, you, you've... There's very few... There's very little proof of it actually being there, but the reports do tend to come from some very, very credible, creditable witnesses and are a little bit difficult to disprove. So how many cases do you reckon there's been over the years, if you, if you had to, you know, guess? Cause, oh, uh, I, hundreds. Oh, no, literally hundreds of these things? Literally hundreds, literally hundreds. Not so many in the UK, but America and Japan. Uh, they are very, very common sightings. Um, and if you go onto the internet and you put in uh, to YouTube Japanese ghosts, movies and things like that, the, the Japanese are absolutely full of these dark-eyed children and black-eyed right. children that just sort of uh, appear in the back of um, video clips. But when it comes to Staffordshire, when it comes to this particular ghost theme, or, uh, well, you said it's not a ghost, what did you say earlier? Spectre? It's yeah, I mean, nobody seems to know. Nobody seems to know whether it's a ghost, whether it's a spectre, um, whether it's um, a, a demon. I mean, you know, I've, I've, I've read them as being uh, as being everything. Well, why has there been a gap for thirty years? Uh, you know, has she been on holiday somewhere? Has she decided to come back? Well, why is that? Why is there a gap of thirty years? Do you think? Again, who knows? It may be that the uh, the environmental the environmental situation is is better for them now than it has been. You know, things might be in the right pro, in the right. Um, how can I say? It? When when you see when when people see a ghost, it's normally because the, everything sort of gels into place like a like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. And if there's one piece missing from that jigsaw puzzle, then you tend not to see. 
spirit. It's only when things sort of all fall into place, um, such as the environmental um, the, the weather, yeah. um, certain things like that. When everything falls into place, that's when you tend to see more spectres and things like that. Now, do we have anything similar like this in Coventry and Warwickshire? Do I we can't have... find anything at all like this in Coventry and Warwickshire. I'm glad to hear it. Whatsoever. I, I could drive home uh, safe tonight, then. You I, can, yeah. I do not I want mean, a little we, girl we, tapping we on the side of my few, car. We have a few black dogs that are seen on a regular basis in, in the county. Um, that spectral, spectral dogs, but I mean, that, that does go back for hundreds and hundreds of years. People have been seeing spectral dogs. But the black-eyed children, or BEKs, as they're known in America, BECs, they're yeah. called black-eyed kids, um, that, is a, that is a relatively new phenomena. And I, as I say, I can only get it to go back to the 1980s. So, who knows? Now, as you know, you know this better than anybody, so that's why it's really good to talk to you, Steve. Not everybody believes in ghosts, I have no. to be honest. And, and I'm one of them, I have to be honest. No. Put my hands in the air. I'm a non-believer when it comes to ghosties. But if anybody were to see a ghost, if anybody were to see something like that, what would you recommend they do? Don't panic. That's the best thing that you can do, is don't panic. There are two sorts of hauntings that we've come across. Yeah. Um, in the years that we've been doing investigations, and that's intelligent hauntings and what we call rerun hauntings, where it's um, like a spirit that's just like a video recording. It's just replaying itself over and over again. Right, this is, this is the sort of ghost that walks through a wall, and when you look back, you find out that there used to be a door where this wall now is. Oh, right, or okay. there is the classic, uh, classic one of the guy that was working in a cellar in York years and years ago, and he actually witnessed a full Roman legion walk <laughs> through this cellar. A full Roman legion? A full Roman legion, including <laughs> horses. And, um, obviously, uh, he actually had a heart attack. Mm. He was that scared. Uh, he recovered in the end, but the thing... You don't see a Roman legion walking through your wall every you day, do you? You don't see it every day. You don't. It's not the sort of thing that you get out of bed in the morning thinking you're going to see before you, you go back. But the thing that struck him the most was the fact that they were all buried from the knees down. Right. So as they were walking, everything was buried from the knees down. And it was only later that they actually excavated the cellar and found an old Roman road there. Wow. Now, you see, there's yeah, no way the that he would have known that because it was a lost Roman road. Can I just say, Steve, it's been absolutely amazing and fascinating talking to you. I know you've, uh, you crop up on this show from time to time. I do. But, but it's been brilliant to talk to you. And remind us what you do. What, remind us what you do. We are actually, uh, Coventry Paranormal Investigators. Yeah. We are a, a, a group of healthy skeptics and believers <laughs> who, um, we just go around and we try and find proof. But the thing, what we, the thing that we do is we will try and debunk uh, as many of these reports as we can, oh, by see, finding yeah. out reasons why something happens. Because I would say, in my experience, only 2% of what we, uh, what we actually go and investigate cannot be explained rationally. Now, quick question for you, because uh, I've got to head towards the news now. Quick go question, uh, and I was speaking to producer Kerry about this earlier on. My cat, yes. he often sits uh, to the right of me, right, and he's looking at something behind me and there's nothing there. What's he looking at, please? Right, the chances oh, are, and a no. lot of people believe this, that uh, animals are more susceptible, as are children, to actually seeing things that we as adults sort of grow up to not believe in. Yeah. Um, I had a dog which watched what appeared to be somebody walk across our living room a couple of years ago, and the dog was almost staring at head height and watched this, whatever it was, leave the room yeah. as she followed it out the door. Now, I couldn't see a thing. Um, but there is lots of, lots of instances where that sort of things happen, where um, a dog will dart under a chair at the moment its master dies in a, in a completely different area, you know, or start howling at the moment. So, so this is, oh, thank you, Steve. I could talk to you for another half an hour, but thank That's you very right, much no indeed. Problem. Good to talk to you, and thank you for uh, sharing a bit more news with us about As this.